Does Fallout 4 know who you're voting for? Clickbait! Oh, shut up. It's no secret that game developers mine the real world for influences for their games. Hell, we even have an entire series here on this channel devoted to meticulously pointing out, like, every minute cultural, literary, and whatever the hell else references and influences are hidden within video games. But are politics really in our games? Really? I mean, games appeal across ideological backgrounds, in the West at least. Conservatives, liberals, we all love ourselves some Fallout, Mass Effect, Skyrim, and whatever the hell else. So it's really unlikely that a game developer would intentionally politicize its game, unless, of course, that were the entire point. And that's not the point of Fallout, right? Fallout's about shooting ghouls, raiders, and picking up every spare piece of trash you can fit in your pants. Oh, wait, there's the main plot. The whole who's gonna rule the wasteland thing. You know, I always forget about that. There's the Institute, of course, a, a relic of the old world, which has all the best technology, which is not for you. There's the Brotherhood of Steel, which is also a relic of pre-war America. It's a faction born out of the United States military. They also have a bit of a technology fetish, but are a lot more reserved than the Institute is. They fight with lasers and plasma and wear power armor and think that the average person shouldn't be allowed to touch their shiny stuff. Then there's the railroad, the radical underdogs who live in the sewer fighting to free synths from what they believe is the tyrannical overlords of the Institute, and that's it. Three impressive, powerful, and ideological factions who are willing to fight for their cause and- Oh shit, I forgot about the Minutemen. Uh... There's them, too! <laughs> they go around the wasteland building houses. Well, actually, you go around the wasteland building houses. Each of these factions holds strong ideals, many of them conflicting. You know what other factions hold strong ideals, want to control America, and are willing to fight over it? Political parties. If you live in the United States right now, in fact, it's basically impossible to miss what's going on outside your door. The biggest political parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, are currently picking their main champions gladiatorial style to see who's gonna be facing off in the big fight over the country. Okay, that's not actually how it works, but this video can only be so long, so I can't even begin to explain how presidential primaries work or the electoral college. I'm getting off track. In the West, we typically describe these parties as being either left-wing or right-wing, with the left classically being called liberal and the right conservative. And this slang goes back to like forever ago, and it doesn't actually come out of America, it comes out of France. It references the seating arrangements in the French Parliament after the Revolution, where the rich aristocracy sat on the right side and the commoners sat on the left. So the historic image is that the right represents the rich establishment, usually championing tradition, slow and cautious social change, if any at all, whereas the left is said to represent protecting the poor and disenfranchised, and often calls for swift action and aggressive social and economic change. Now, now, these are gross oversimplifications of these two diametrically different worldviews, but even in this really basic way of looking at politics and philosophies, you can already see patterns emerging, both in the ways that modern political parties market themselves to voters and, well, in what the factions of Fallout 4 fight for. But it feels kind of basic, doesn't it? And, and kind of unsatisfying, this left and right. That's not very descriptive at all, and it doesn't explain how organizations that may be more closely aligned want to fight each other tooth and nail. Well, it turns out that the left-right divide is incredibly basic. In fact, most serious political scientists don't even consider looking at politics this way. I mean, look at the United States. We have Cruz, Trump, Clinton, Sanders, and that's just in 2016. On a simple left and right graph, they don't really look that different at all. Well, for starters, Everyone's fucking weird. You get two Democrats in a room and they talk long enough, they'll disagree about something. It turns out lumping people together into broad groups doesn't actually tell you a lot about an individual person. You, you see this a lot in Fallout 4, too. A deacon talks about how members of the railroad will argue for hours about whether or not, say, turrets and toasters should have rights. And in the Institute, they're far from a united front. There are a few folk inside who think that maybe synths should be treated as human, or there's Dr. Lee who thinks that making child synths is wrong. Political scientists hate this flat plane because, well, look at it. Like, if I tell you I'm right or left-leaning, what does that tell you? Not much. This is why folks who analyze politics actually use multiple axes if they're gonna try to visualize an entire person's political perspective. And voila, you get quadrants. Now, of course, nobody can entirely agree on what metrics are best to measure by because as it turns out, people are still too complicated for even two planes. Go figure.
One of the most commonly used charts is the Nolan chart, which was created by David Nolan in 1969, who, for whatever reason, turned his chart 45 degrees just to irritate me. Actually, Nolan was the first to make a chart like this, and the two axes he used to measure were social freedom and economic control. This is the same basic way of looking at politics that sites like Political Compass use. The top right is low social freedom and low economic control, and the bottom right is high social freedom and low economic control. The bottom left is high social freedom and high economic control, and last, the upper left corner is low social freedom, high economic control. For a quick reference with some extreme examples, most of the Republican candidates in the United States right now are upper writers. Almost nobody is a lower writer. Uh, Gandhi was a lower left and Stalin was an upper left. So what does this mean for Fallout 4? It basically doesn't have an economy. Well, it, it kind of does. It does have bottle caps, but shit, they're basically a barter system. There's nothing really nuanced here, but Fuck it. These charts, after all, are just a tool to help us understand the world. So let's put on our political science hats and make our own goddamn charts. There isn't really control over the economy, but what there is is control over technology. So what if we scrap the economics plane altogether and replace it with technology? So if the right is high control over technology and we retain social liberties, we get something different. All the way in the upper right, we have the Institute, with it wanting to maintain incredibly strict control over technology. These score low on social freedom because they want to keep synths under control, and worse than that, they actually replace key leaders in the commonwealth with synths in order to maintain control, so that makes sense. Down here in the bottom right we have the Brotherhood of Steel, which honestly isn't quite as extreme down south as the Institute is up north, mostly because uh, almost nobody inhabits that region at all. They're way less focused on controlling the wasteland, though they really do care a lot about the conduct of their own. Still, they're highly invested in keeping technology under control. They're not quite as extreme as the Institute in this regard, since they will trade, but on the other hand, they want to crush the shit out of any tech they don't approve of. They're definitely diametrically opposed. Now let's zoom over to the bottom left, with lots of social freedom and lots of availability of technology. The railroad is about smashing the institute to bits so they can't A, control synths, or B, the rest of the commonwealth. In fact, their core philosophy is about liberation, so they're definitely pretty far down here. They also score high on freedom of technology, since they use it very liberally themselves, and in fact, if you don't consider synths to be people, this only validates this point further because they want to relieve the institute of this technology and redistribute synths and tech to the rest of the population. It also makes a ton of sense that they would be opposed to the Brotherhood. In fact, they're opposed even more so than the institute is. The institute merely views the Brotherhood as a possible military threat, whereas the railroad views both the institute and the Brotherhood as a threat to their very ideologies and what they stand for. The Minutemen, sadly, do not occupy the upper left. I don't think anybody does, but they're decidedly more moderate. They're definitely high scorers for social liberty, although they don't really marry themselves to the railroad's cause. They're all about unhooking the Institute's control, but at the end of the day, they're more invested in making the Commonwealth better. Compared to everybody else, they're basically moderates, which actually makes a lot of sense. They get along with just about everybody. When you look at the wasteland this way, it makes a hell of a lot more sense why these people are fighting against one another. So how does this compare to politics in our real world? Well, honestly, it's hard to say. Our little homemade chart here is pretty good at depicting how politics work in the Fallout world with its Fallout problems, but it doesn't really translate into a perfect one-to-one -one ratio when you compare it to the United States in 2016. But here's a chart from Political Compass, which uses the Nolan method we talked about earlier, with a few folk on it that you may have heard of. So who you sided with in Fallout 4 tells you who you're voting for, right? If you sided with the Institute, you're probably going with Trump, and if you went with the Minutemen, you're probably feeling the burn right now, right? Well, maybe not. For one thing, these factions in Fallout aren't perfect analogs for modern day political parties. Sure, the Institute has a lot of tradition behind it and may under some lenses be folk who violate the rights of others, but they don't deal with the same problems that you and I do. They're not worried about like global warming and the economy and shit. They're trying to survive. Same with the Brotherhood of Steel, the Railroad, and the Minutemen. Also, while there are definitely undertones of modern politics in these factions, they're all relatively simple. They're essentially caricatures of what you and I really care about and think. They have to be. Video games aren't quite capable of fully replicating what a complex group of complex humans think and feel. Just like there's no chart with enough axes on it to perfectly tell you what a person thinks and feels or why they value what they value. So maybe it's easier to side with just whoever because 
you know, whatever. It's just make-believe. And I think that's the final reason why what faction you chose doesn't really represent what political opinions you have. It's a video game. Who gives a shit what you do? The stakes aren't exactly that high at the end of the day. In fact, if you hate your choice, you probably even have an old save you can go back to and choose someone else. You're not stuck with choices for years and your real life isn't really all that affected by it. Fallout 4 has less authority than a Buzzfeed quiz. And at the end of this, some of you may be like, what the fuck, Jesus, this is a bunch of shit. There's no way Bethesda did this on purpose and you're just looking too far into it. And that could honestly be true. Actually, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if Bethesda didn't do it on purpose. They just wanted to create an interesting game with conflict and depth. When you create organizations that oppose one another, they're going to end up at different ends of different spectrums. But at the same time, the folks at Bethesda live in the United States, and most of them were born and raised here. All in all, they spent about seven years developing Fallout 4, during which a ton of important and world-changing political issues and conflicts have arisen. Even if they don't put these undertones in there on purpose, you can't make art in a vacuum. Just how J.R.R. Tolkien and H.P. Lovecraft influenced World of Warcraft and Skyrim to this day, a game steeped in American culture in history can't help but be affected by the wars that were fought on its soil, even if it's a war fought in voting booths with ballots instead of bullets. And while it doesn't perfectly mimic the actual beliefs of modern day politics, Fallout 4 does illustrate pretty well how catastrophic it can be for groups of people if we choose to fight instead of listen. When we choose to paint people with different beliefs than our own with a broad brush, when we decide that other people are stupid and not worth thinking of as human, and when we choose war over cooperation. And if there's one thing that Fallout Fallout taught us, it's that war, well, you know the rest. Thanks for watching. And before I get to the rest of the outro, I want to announce something exciting. ShoddyCast has entered into a sponsorship partnership with G2A.com. They're going to be sponsoring our Hidden History series, which is pretty sweet. G2A.com is a website that sells Steam keys at a discounted price. I don't know how they do it. It shouldn't affect your life too much if you're a frequent watcher of Hidden History, but here's some cool bits. If you use the discount code CAST, you get 3% off your purchase. And wait, what, 3%? That's like less than sales tax. Yeah, whatever. And if you use the link in the description to buy games, we get a little commission out of it, which will help keep our lights on so we can keep making videos for you guys. So if you're planning on buying a game anyway, you can buy it while helping our channel. Also, I have 10 $20 gift certificates that you can use to buy games on G2A, which I know doesn't sound like a bunch, but hell, last time I looked, Fallout 4 was only 35 bucks on there. Anyway, to enter to win a gift card, just hop on Twitter and find ShoddyCast and tweet at us with the hashtag ShoddyG2A with who you sided with in Fallout 4. And that's it. I'm not going to bug you about it again. It's your life. Do what you want. And what do you think? How did your own personal political beliefs line up with the little chart that we made? Did the faction you chose have any tie into what you actually believe? How did you actually like our chart? Is there any other way that you would have done it? What metrics should we have used? Is there something better? Like, uh, I can't think of anything. That's why I chose technology and social liberty. They made sense to me, but maybe, maybe there's a better way to look at factions. You, you tell me what you think. I want to know. I want to send out a personal thank you to all the Patreon supporters who help make this show stay alive. If you want, you can follow us on Twitter at, at ShoddyCast, and you can follow us on Facebook too. I don't have anything else to say. Try not to get in too bad of a flame war in the, in the comments. Why am I even saying that? It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Talking about politics.